Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Q1 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Aegis Logistics Limited. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anish Chandria, Vice Chairman and Managing Director of Aegis Logistics Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. I, I will be presenting the uh, quarter one results for uh, the current financial year, FY22. Uh, it was a below par set of results for quarter one, um, really uh, affected by the peak second wave of COVID in uh, April and May, uh, especially on the gas business uh, side. Uh, fortunately, as I will explain, sales volumes are already picking up in quarter two, that means from July onwards, but uh, quarter one, April, May, June, particularly April and May, were, uh, were uh, affected by the peak uh, second wave of COVID. Uh, let me go through the figures. Total revenues for quarter one uh, were 678.1 crores versus 636.4 crores year earlier. Total EBITDA for quarter one was 114 crores versus 118 crores a year earlier, a drop of 3% year on year. Normalized profit before tax for quarter one was 90.3 crores versus 92.2 crores a year earlier after adjusting the earlier figure for the employee stock uh, purchase plan of last year. Uh, so that's a drop of 2%. Uh, I just want to make it clear that from this year onwards, including quarter one, the employee stock purchase plan, there is no more uh, uh, expensing for that. So that will fall out of the figures, but obviously to compare on a like-for-like -like basis, we have to adjust the previous year's uh, quarterly figures for the uh, non-cash charge of the employee stock purchase plan. Uh, profit after tax for quarter one, after all minority interests, uh, that is the uh, net profit after tax available to Asia's shareholders, was 66.4 crores versus 71.8 crores, again after the earlier year, adjusting for the uh, employee stock plan. So that's a drop of 7.5% year on year in net profit after tax after all minority interest. Uh, let me go through the segment analysis as usual, which will uh, explain what was happening in the underlying uh, business segments, starting with the liquid tunnel division which remains strong in quarter one, as it has throughout the COVID crisis. In fact, uh, another record uh, revenue figure for quarter one, 66 crores for uh, quarter one versus 55 crores a year earlier, a rise of 19% year on year in uh, revenues. And EBITDA was also very strong, uh, 49 crores uh, for Q1 versus 40 crores a year earlier, a rise of 23% year on year in EBITDA for the liquid channels division. Uh, again, it shows the efforts of the past expansion capacity, which we have uh, carried out paying off in uh, increased revenues and increased uh, EBITDA. And of course, the commissioning of the new capacity in Mangalore and in Haldia, uh, which, uh, which started to show results in quarter one. Uh, just to remind everyone that uh, we had a project of 50,000 kiloliter expansion of capacity in Mangalore and 54,000 kilometers in Haldia. So uh, some of those uh, revenues are already in quarter one and they will continue to be sustained uh, in throughout FY22, which will add to the liquid terminal division uh, revenue growth and, and uh, profits growth. So uh, as I said, uh, uh, actually the liquid terminal division performed uh, very healthily in uh, quarter one. But the gas division was uh, affected uh, again, just like last year at the same time, uh, around this time uh, uh, of COVID. Of course, last year there was a national lockdown 
this year in April and May, there was no national lockdown. Of course, there were various state curfews and state lockdowns and uh, all that. But uh, April and May, uh, particularly, uh, when cases were rising to 400,000 a day in India, um, uh, we, we were affected in, in all segments of, uh, of the gas division, which I'll go through the volume figures in, in one minute. Um, let me just quickly finish the revenues in EBITDA figures for quarter one for the gas division. Revenues for, in quarter one was 612 crores versus 581 crores a year earlier. The EBITDA in quarter one uh, for the gas division was uh, 65 crores versus 78 crores a year earlier. So a drop of 16% uh, in the EBITDA of uh, the, the gas uh, division. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, this uh, the impact uh, was felt in in all the uh, uh, market segments that we have in the gas division. Let's start with the LPG throughput volumes. Uh, it uh, was 568,000 metric tons of throughput volumes in our three terminals of Bipal, Haldia, and uh, Mumbai uh, in quarter one, versus 700,000 metric tons a year earlier, a drop of 19% year on year. And all terminals, uh, Haldia, Mumbai, Bipal, throughput uh, volumes did fall in the face of this uh, second uh, wave. Uh, quite simply, there were less ships uh, and less cargoes uh, ordered uh, from the public sector units in all three terminals, uh, particularly in April and May. Uh, there was a bounce back in June as um, you know the COVID issues started to reduce, but April and May uh, was uh, was definitely affected. In addition, uh, there were two major cyclones uh, in. Uh, which affected both uh, PayPal and Haldia ports in quarter one. Um, now, I, I would like to say that our terminals actually were not affected. Uh, there was no real damage in either uh, PayPal and Haldia in our terminals, but it was more the two ports. Uh, they sustained uh, some damage, uh, particularly in PayPal, um, and uh, uh, the impact was really more in terms of re reduction of shipping uh, when those uh, uh, when those cyclones uh, hit, because obviously no one could bring ships during those uh, those days. Um, so that was the impact of the uh, cyclone. But um, industrial sales, uh, now the next segment, industrial sales in quarter one, uh, which is part of our uh, retail uh, distribution uh, segment, was 22,271 uh, metric tons versus 7,414 metric tons. So that actually was a very big rise of 200% year on year, despite uh, the uh, COVID, which suggests that at least private industry, uh, unlike last year when we had a national lockdown, private industry uh, uh, kept going uh, uh, in terms of their consumption of gas. So that, that was reasonably healthy. Uh, auto gas, uh, however, was 3,500. 67 metric tons in quarter one versus 2,944 metric tons a year earlier. So it's still a rise of 21% year on year compared to last year's uh, lockdown, but still much lower than quarter four figure, uh, uh, January, February, March of 2021, where we sold 5,926 uh, metric tons. So 3,567 metric tons in quarter one of uh, FY22 was lower uh, quarter on quarter, but obviously uh, still higher than the previous year. So there was uh, impact of um, COVID on that. Uh, clearly less movement of people, so less use of uh, auto rickshaws and taxis, uh, that, that obviously would affect the auto gas uh, business, but not as much as the, when we had the national lockdown last year. Similarly, the cylinder business, the commercial and domestic market segment, Sales in quarter one were 5,039 metric tons versus 2,553 uh, metric tons. Again, 97% rise year on year, uh, which was affected by the national lockdown last year, but still lower uh, than the 6,430 metric tons in quarter four of FY21. So 5,039 uh, metric tons in quarter one of this financial FY22, still lower uh, quarter on quarter, but higher year on year. Um, and sourcing was 100,000 metric tons in quarter one versus 158,000 metric tons a uh, year earlier, the sourcing of, of gas. So the summary is, uh, I think, primarily the COVID second wave uh, 
did affect every market segment for LPG sales volumes uh, uh, compared to uh, the previous quarter, quarter four. Um, some some positive uh, uh, sales figures year on year, but obviously, uh, if we had not had the second wave in April and May, uh, it would have been uh, better. Let me talk about the outlook for quarter two and the rest of FY22. Um, now, we have some good expectations for the liquid division uh, throughout the rest of the year, including in, in quarter two and the rest of the year, obviously because of the new capacity that we have uh, commissioned in Mangalore, the 50,000 kiliters, and the Haldia, 54,000 kiliters uh, also. So that And that business, every terminal, whether it is Kochi, Mumbai, um, Haldia, Mangalore, uh, etc., Kamla, they're all operating well. Uh, PayPal uh, remains, uh, PayPal Liquid remains the only one which is still uh, below uh, expectations uh, in terms of price utilization. But all the other terminals have been, have been uh, strong throughout uh, COVID and they remain uh, strong in uh, Q1 of FY22 and we expect that to be sustained throughout the, the year. So that's, that's positive. Now for LPG volumes, uh, gas volumes, uh, for auto gas we're already seeing signs of a bounce back in quarter two. Obviously, uh, July is almost over, so we're actually seeing a good bounce back in uh, auto gas. Uh, it started already in June. Uh, that is uh, the tail end of quarter one, but it is uh, uh, risen already with the sales volumes in, uh, in July. And uh, we expect uh, further increases in, in sales volumes in August and September, uh, assuming uh, that there is no third wave of uh, COVID, which I don't know if there will be, but right now things are uh, definitely better than uh, April and May. Uh, so at the moment, the expectation of our marketing team is uh, continued uh, uh, volumes uh, growth, uh, sales volumes growth of auto gas. In fact, we are now hoping to see a recovery to pre-COVID sales levels uh, in the second half of this financial year, that is in the uh, uh, second half of FY22 from October onwards. Uh, so some bounce back already seen in quarter two, uh, July to September, uh, but we're actually now looking for the first time in 18 months for uh, growth beyond uh, uh, COVID uh, sales levels. So in other words, going back to pre-COVID sales level time uh, in terms of auto gas. Uh, again, assuming that uh, uh, there, there are not so many COVID restrictions and people uh, begin to move around as, as they were. Um, similarly, for the cylinder segment, again, we are seeing a recovery in quarter two in, in sales volumes uh, in July uh, from the quarter one levels, uh, again, due to less impact from uh, COVID. Uh, there are uh, more uh, use of uh, LBG in uh, hotels, restaurants, etc. So there is going to be a positive uh, bounce back in quarter two, it looks like. Uh, July, we've already seen that. And uh, we, we, expect, uh, uh, we expect there to be further growth in sales uh, throughout FY22 as a result of uh, not only less restrictions in the COVID, but also because we have expanded the dealer distribution network uh, uh, throughout this last uh, 12 to 16, 17 months. Uh, and uh, for the finally, for the LPG logistics throughput volumes, the uh, throughput volumes in Haldia, Mumbai, and Bipal, uh again in quarter two, uh, just like the other ones, uh, the other segments, we're seeing a bounce back in uh, sales volumes from the quarter one figures, which is which is heartening to see. Obviously, that is uh, July figures, but the expectation in terms of the order book for August and September in terms of uh, what we expect um, uh, is positive, and we, we expect to see better volumes in, uh, in quarter two, and uh, further uh, increase in volumes in the second half of FY22 due to the following factors. One, there's normally a better seasonal demand from quarter three uh, onwards, which is Diwali time, et cetera. That's normally uh, the case. Uh, we also expect to see more rail throughput in PIPA once the Jetty modification work uh, is over in uh, by Gujarat Pipa Port Limited to allow party laden BLGCs. Uh, so we expect that to kick in in the second half of the financial year uh, with uh, BPCL uh, rail throughput particularly increasing 
uh, as well as IOC, as because if, if they're able to bring uh, VLGCs into PayPal port, that will that'll be able to make a big difference to the rail throughput volumes in, in PayPal compared to what we are seeing today. And of course, the commissioning of the Kandla LPG terminal in the second half of the uh, financial year FY22. Uh, which brings me to the project up, update and, of course, uh, just a reference to the rollback deal which we announced uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, first, let me start with the Kandla LPG project. Uh, the project work is getting back on track after the hiatus of quarter one. You recall in the last earnings call I said in quarter one, uh, we, we uh, did have a problem with manpower uh, during uh, the uh, peak COVID uh, levels of April and May, uh, there was actually difficulty in uh, uh, many of the contractors uh, in terms of manpower and uh, also the lack of oxygen which affected the construction work. So both did slow down uh, on, the, on the project, but uh, I'm pleased to say um, that uh, now uh, th those factors have dissipated and uh, we are mobilizing, as we speak, the contractors, the manpower for the final push to complete this project, um, and we hope to see uh, the, uh, the uh, commissioning in quarter three um, of, uh, of this year, FY22. That means mechanical completion of all work by end of quarter two, um, and then the commissioning in quarter three. And that's, that should be positive for uh, throughput volumes for um, the Kanda LP uh, in the second half of the uh, year. Uh, we've also announced a major deal with Wopac, uh, which I referred to, and now we're going through the conditions, uh, all the conditions precedent and the various milestones for closing, which we expect in the next six to eight months uh, to close uh, uh, that deal. And uh, uh, I think really uh, nothing else to say on that. We've explained, uh, explained the deal. But even before we close the deal uh, with Wopac, the uh, AGC is already not waiting around. We're starting to execute the joint business plan uh, of expansion in our terminal business. So uh, nothing, uh, nothing to say today, but uh, we will be uh, obviously as, as and when we can uh, implement uh, the various um, uh, projects, et cetera, in that uh, joint business plan in Bopac. We will not wait for the closing, but we will start, uh, start implementing that in this year, FY22 itself. Uh, and then, of course, beyond that, uh, in FY23, once the joint venture uh, starts, uh, which I remind everyone, 51% uh, of the earnings uh, for the joint venture will be consolidated into AGIS earnings. 49% will be rolled back, but 51% uh, of uh, of the earnings of the joint venture AGIS rolled back term limited, uh, most likely from next year. But FY22 will remain uh, AGIS business uh, while we while we close the. Okay, uh, that really closes my presentation. You can now take some questions. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question at this time, please press star 1 on your phone. We have the first question from the line of the page from Aquarius. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my questions. Sir, throughput volumes growth has been lagging the Indian LPG imports for the last six quarters now. And this quarter, your market share seems around 16% of the overall LPG imports which is the lowest in the last three, four years. So just wanted to understand what are the reasons for the same that you're underperforming in this thing? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think that's, that's correct what you said. Uh, I think there are specific uh, uh, factors that all terms, whether it is Haldia, uh, PayPal, as well as uh, Mumbai, we, we did see, as I said, in quarter one, uh, less ships and less uh, uh, cargoes. Uh, but I don't, I think it is temporary. Uh, because we, as I said, we already see in quarter two a, a healthy bounce back uh, starting in July, and so there's no particular factors. It's just that, you know, ultimately depends on the public sectors, uh, which means IOC, HPCL, BPCL, uh, where they want to import the cargoes, uh, which which terminals, etc. But uh, there, there was no, I don't think there's any particular 
uh, concerns, um, but because we're already seeing a, a, a good bounce back. So let me go through very quickly. Uh, Haldia, uh, without without going to specific numbers, um, we uh, we now know, of course, BP Cell has already gone out to their to, to their own terminal, which was which uh, uh, was the case uh, since uh, since December of 2020. But uh, we are seeing um, uh, rising uh, volumes from uh, HPCL, uh, which is the anchor customer in Aldia, in quarter two, a bounce back from quarter one. And uh, they have indicated to us that uh, throughout the, the year, uh, there will be growth. Uh, and uh, so we have a, we have a good, uh, now, uh, you know, good uh, forecast from uh, HPCL in terms of volumes. It will not... Uh, it will not replace all the volumes of uh, BPCL that uh, immediately, but um, uh, we, we are already seeing uh, a bounce back in uh, uh, volumes uh, from quarter one, as well as uh, replacing some of the uh, loss of the BPCL sales. And that, of course, we uh, we expected, and we will continue to see. We think in FY23 and beyond the further growth of, from. Uh, HPCL, but this year, um, so Aldi, I think, is looking. Mumbai has already bounced back uh, 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 very strongly in uh, in quarter two. Uh, in uh, uh, in fact, in June it already started bouncing back. Uh, so not April, May, but in June it started. But July is uh, seeing further growth. So uh, Mumbai is looking very strong, uh, going using that Uran and pipeline and uh, etc. So um, we we remain confident in Mumbai that that's that's good. And uh, PIPA, as I said, I think uh, the railway movement is going quite well. Uh, uh, we uh, signed up two customers, IC and BPCL. Uh, but BPCL is facing challenges uh, right now in uh, doing more uh, throughput that they want to do because they've indicated they want to do uh, because of the lack of uh, ships. Uh, the, you know, so there are specific factors uh, on the jetty, which is why we have been uh, working with the port to make those modifications. Of course, it's their project uh, in, in the jetty, which I mentioned. Uh, once that is over, and we have a clear timeline from uh, uh, the port as to when that jetty modification work will be over, then we will be able to handle party laden DLDCs uh, in PayPal uh, for BPCL, IOC, et cetera. And this sheer number of ships uh, can then increase, and therefore the throughput volumes uh, in the second half of this uh, financial year. So I think there are, there are some specific factors in uh, in uh, PIPAL which which will uh, now change uh, uh, you know, probably in the second half of the, of the year. Um, but uh, Mumbai is, is, is looking strong and Haldia is now looking strong as well. So I think um, uh, don't don't see any concerns. And then of course uh, once we commission the Kanda LPG project that will uh, give a, uh, a big boost to uh, the, the volume. So we do expect, uh, uh, just to complete the picture, we do expect to see uh, a good volume growth in our LPG uh, division in FY22. But there are some uh, specific challenges that, that uh, we have to deal with in April and maybe to approve it. But don't expect, uh, we don't expect any major problems uh, uh, in terms of volumes, the volumes were um, uh, taking all, all the factors into account. Uh, so uh, after after being affected by uh, COVID and uh, etc., but I don't think that will really be. Of course, I can't predict uh, COVID, but I don't expect uh, that to um, uh, badly affect the throughput volumes in the year as a whole now. Uh, but we're already seeing the first signs of a bounce back in June and July, and we expect that to continue. In all the got it. Got it, sir. Uh, so, secondly, uh, given the delay in the Kanda terminal, what is the expectation for volumes in FI22? Because the PPT still mentions 1 million tons. So, I just wanted the updated number now. Yeah, I think we are, we are, uh, we are um, obviously one quarter delayed from the, uh, you know, earlier we thought we would be able to commission in quarter two. Now, we need uh, uh, most likely be quarter three. So, I think... Uh, Pro rata, we probably would, uh, you know, we've been budgeting around uh, 700,000 tons. So pro rata probably will be one quarter less than that um, if, if you just uh, uh, look at it. So uh, because it will really be uh, Q3 and Q4 rather than Q2, Q3, Q4. So uh, that's that's what we uh, see. But um, I think I, I think we, I will be able to have a better sense once we actually commission the terminal uh, because uh, it really depends on. Uh, on the customers, uh, how how soon they really want to uh, get going. It's once that uh, 
and that plumbing is ready. So um, ask me again in the in the uh, in, in the October uh, earnings call, and uh, I probably have a better sense. But for now, I would uh, I would probably uh, just by taking out one quarter because we are uh, delayed by one quarter uh, quarter two. I would probably um, adjust downwards. Uh, and but, uh, sure. but we might we might be able to uh, have more clarity by by October. Sure. Sir. So lastly, uh, the beta per ton for gas handling that you normally mention around 1000 rupees per ton, uh, that seems to be lower this quarter. Is it a correct observation? And secondly, the LPG prices have moved up 30% by OY. So what kind of a beta per ton are we making in the distribution business? So, uh, yeah, on the, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't really recognize that uh, because the uh, EBITDA figures on the, on the uh, throughput, that seems to be stable because all the the rates are the same, so uh, don't know where you get that. But uh, so I think that 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 is remain stable. Um, all the rates are the same, so it hasn't changed. Um, the uh, as far as the um, on the distribution business, yes, uh, uh, international LPG prices have uh, increased, uh, not as much as crude oil has increased. In fact, uh, we were discussing in the ages board meeting yesterday the very same uh, same issue. Um, but uh, the distribution margins have. Uh, Actually, remained uh, quite uh, quite stable and quite good. Uh, you know, that's the nature of the business. But what was affected was uh, the, the sales volumes, not not the margins. But the margins have remained uh, quite uh, quite stable throughout. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question at this time, may press star and one on your phone. The next question is from the line of Rajat Sethia from I Thought Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, there are a lot of discrepancies between the financial between the press release uh, related to the deal that Wopak has come out with and what we have uh, heard from you. Could you please clarify on the same? Yeah, we have uh, actually uh, in several calls. Uh, we have actually explained exactly how it backs up. I'm going to ask uh, our CFO Murad Mogdina to explain again. You might you might not have been on those calls, but it it all ties up uh, very well. Uh, Murad, you want to give the usual <laughs> usual accounting of uh, of the uh, OPEC amount in euros and the rupee amounts uh, that that uh, we we have uh, given, like you have. Yeah. Given. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, to very simply put it, and we have explained uh, several times in uh, past calls that the OPEC uh, press release talks of three numbers: 153, 115, and 40. If you add all the three and convert into rupees, that is what we have said is what we are going to receive out of the deal: 2,766 crores. So it matches. So then the follow-up is that this 153 that you are talking about, actually as per that release, it says WOPAC and AGES have arranged this financing. Yeah, yeah but that is going to come entirely to AGES for for the uh, you know JV uh, uh, transaction. No, no. So it will come to AGES. That is understandable. However, is this debt going to be on the books of JV? On, on the JV Co, yes. So what uh, the, both the partners have uh, decided is going forward, uh, JV Co from day one uh, would be uh, uh, conservatively geared uh, to a maximum gear, debt gearing ratio of 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. So this debt is going to remain over the lifetime of the JV Co. And uh, that is why uh, the clarification given by OPEC. So just, to, uh, just to make sure that I have understood it right, so we are saying uh, we will take 153 million euros of debt in JV, and then that 153 million will come to AGES as part of the consideration, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so that essentially does not convert into. So basically, we are raising debt in the JV and then paying ourselves. So essentially, the effective valuation of the JV of of the deal in fact goes down. Is that no, understanding? No, that your understanding is uh, wrong. Uh, the whole consideration amount is 2766 crore, which AGIS is going to receive. And uh, you see, the conduct of JVCO from uh, day one is uh, what has been decided how the capital structure is going to be formed. So that is how it will conduct itself. 
So whether you take it out of uh, projects which the JVCO do or for, for this, so you know debt and equity has been pre-decided between the partners and that is how it is going to function. So that has got nothing to do with what amount we are going to receive. So what we are going to receive out of the transaction is 2,766 crore. The RICO which you asked for is what we have clarified to you. So I understand what I am saying is that, uh, so, okay, so other way of saying, uh, looking at at this would be, uh, the, the JV partner is going to give only, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the payment from their side is going to be whatever, like, uh, 2700 crore minus one, 153 million euros, right? Because 153 million euros essentially is coming from the JV as debt, correct? Yes, uh, yeah, you can say that, but it, it's not that simple. So uh, I have explained well, to you what was sorry, sorry, to, I mean, sorry to interrupt you, know. you sir. No, sorry to interrupt you. So in other ways, can we also say that 153 million, since we are going to own 51% of it, so... 153 million ka 51 percent to debt hami le rahe apni books pe and then we are paying ourselves as uh, cash correct uh, again you are you are looking at it in a different way i have uh, i have said it very uh, simply that how the jvco structure capital structure is going to be uh, conducted that has been explained so that debt is ever going to remain so there is no uh, payback of that debt because that is how it will be get so there is no outflow of that debt. That is how the capital structure of that JVCO has been structured. Yeah. So sure. what you are can trying I, to say yeah, is yeah. not actually that what is going to happen. Yeah. So can what I, do you can mean? I put it in? Can I put it in my way just to close this uh, oh. uh, this uh, uh, conversation? Uh, so oh. the way the way we have structured this deal, okay, uh, and it's quite explicit, is that yes, there will be certain amounts of uh, by go back to ages. Uh, which, which are the figures that, that, that you quoted in, in euros, uh, which are for uh, buying equity shares in the 49% of the uh, joint venture company. Uh, that is absolutely correct. And then there are uh, these uh, payments after three years of an additional up to 40 million euros paid by back to AG. So that's clear. And then uh, up, when we negotiated the whole uh, thing, uh, the deal and the, the structuring, we had, uh, as, as far as ages is concerned, we had a certain uh, target uh, cash uh, amount uh, that we wanted to uh, take out of the uh, of the transaction, and uh, obviously it was it was then a question of okay, what is uh, and this was discussed with explicitly with Vopak over over a few months. What is an appropriate uh, capital structure, as Murad uh, rightly said, for the venture company? Uh, that's the next part of the discussion. And clearly, zero debt was not acceptable to us or to uh, GoPack. Why, why would you have all this uh, assets and infrastructure with zero debt? Uh, that's not an appropriate capital structure. So we, uh, we ended up negotiating. We said, look, uh, we have certain uh, conservative uh, gearing ratios. They had certain uh, ratios. Anyway, finally, we compromised and we said, okay, uh, uh, 0.5 to one, a uh, debt equity ratio of 0.6 to one, uh, 0.5 or 0.6 to one. Uh, that's the maximum. And with all the, uh, 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 with all the um, uh, assets that we have, therefore that translated into this much uh, debt uh, in the uh, JV Co, which as Murat said, uh, because the JV Co is uh, throwing off a certain amount of cash, we expect that to be maintained uh, uh, almost on a perpetual basis. That, that is a reasonable uh, debt equity uh, structure. And uh, then we said, okay, uh, then that amount of debt, that bank debt, let's say that we raise in, uh, in the JV Co, which both parties, Aegis and Wopak, will, will be working uh, to arrange. In fact, that work is already going on right now. Uh, that will, we will be uh, taking into Aegis as part of the, uh, as part of the transaction. Uh, so we will be extracting that additional cash, hence the 2,766 course. So that's the way the, the deal was negotiated. We, uh, we wanted a certain amount of uh, cash uh, to be taken out of Aegis, and this is the way we structured it. Uh, why did we want a certain amount of cash? Because this allows Aegis in its own balance sheet to have that uh, cash in order to be able to uh, reinvest uh, as required. GoPack will also be able to uh, will be, uh, uh, 
uh, investing in the JV Co because they have a large capex program of up to 4,500 both the JV Co. So uh, uh, it, both shareholders, ages as well as BOPAC, from time to time will be required uh, to to uh, uh, fund uh, that uh, that capex thing. But we wanted to keep the cash. Uh, in ages rather than just let it sit in the in JV Co. And uh, that's, that's the way we structure it. Plus, it also gives ages the flexibility. So when we are discussing with VOPAC other uh, 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 big, uh, big ticket projects, then we have the financial power, firepower uh, with that 2,766 course to be able to uh, put our share of the money up. Uh, let me remind all, uh, uh, all listeners that uh, we've never had uh, the ability at ages to have this size of uh, uh, balance sheet of, of financial firepower to be able to uh, to be able to actually uh, deploy into those into those um, uh, those projects, but we we now will. So I think it it gives us a, a very strong balance sheet in ages logistics limited, and gives us the ability to not only fund our share of the 4,500 crores of capex that the joint venture company will need to do uh, as required, uh, but it will also allow ages to take advantage of uh, future projects that we will do jointly with, uh, with VOPAC. And, uh, and that's what it's all about, uh, ultimately. This whole deal, uh, and why we did it with VOPAC, uh, by the way, was not, uh, was not to generate uh, cash, but it was all to say, okay, how can we actually, together with... Uh, with the world's largest uh, tank storage company, how can we jointly do more projects, faster projects, using uh, and, and, and actually have the financial strength to be able to uh, you know, invest in those projects, which will give future profitability uh, you know, to, to AG shareholders. I mean, that, that's really the, uh, the basis. So I, I hope that clarifies. I think we, we've been uh, through this uh, several times, uh, even in previous calls, but um, the numbers add up, and uh, that's the way uh, we, we structured it so that we would actually uh, extract this amount of cash to the, up to 2,066 scores in ages for, as a result of this uh, transaction. Understood. Understood, Anish. So basically, uh, for any future capex in the JV, uh, JV would be raising more debt because this debt will, will essentially be going towards the deal consideration to ages. Correct? That's right. And uh, of course, um, uh, exactly. And uh, uh, you know, as I said, for, for the future capex, uh, we can, depending on making sure that we don't go above that uh, uh, 0.5 to 1 uh, debt equity ratio, if we can raise uh, more debt in the JV code, as long as we remain within that limit, to fund that uh, further capex, we will. Of course, the, uh, the JV code will be throwing out its own free cash flows, which will also go towards that capex. But then there is the two shareholders, Aegis and GoPack, will are ready to put in further and will have to put in further uh, further uh, amounts. Uh, we'll see whether, whether it will be in the form of equity or shareholder loans, whatever it is, or preferred stock, whatever it is. But both shareholders will make sure that the JV Co. can fund its CapEx program of uh, up to 4,500. And uh, we fully expect to recycle some of that 2,766 course into the JV Co. And GoPack will do its share of 49% uh, pro rata. Understood. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you have a question, you may press star in one on your phone. Okay. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Katari from Alpha Curate Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, Rajesh, sir, we are unable to hear you. Uh, Mr. Katari, we are unable to hear you. As no response, we move to the next question from the line of Shriram Rajaram from uh, Ratnatraya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just have one question from my end. Uh, this is regarding the minority share of EBITDA. Uh, suppose OPAC deal, uh, what would be the percentage of uh, assets that would be uh, taken out uh, in terms of minority? If you can give some broad range in terms of EBITDA that would be used. Yes, again, uh, we've, we've answered this question on several other calls, uh, but you, you're not on the call. So uh, I'll ask Murad uh, because he has all the figures uh, there with him. Uh, Murad, do you want to just answer that question about what share of uh, EBITDA will go out into the 
joint venture company uh, from yes uh, as per the estimates of fy22 we estimate around 90 crore of ebitda to go to wopac uh, from this uh, deal from the businesses which are being put into the jvco okay uh, uh, building an operation of a logistics uh, infrastructure uh, uh, dedicated uh, for them uh, to in their in their complex it's almost like a terminal within their complex and uh, those are large ticket sizes, half a million to one million kilometers. The whole of ages today is, uh, in terms of liquid thermal capacity, uh, I, I think the current figure is uh, 800, over 800,000 kilometers. So just what, uh, and we are talking about uh, in, in this uh, up to 4,500 crores, doing at least, uh, uh, sorry, not at least, doing a, a couple of those industrial terminals. And uh, so those are not just uh, pulled out from the air. These are deals that Vopac has been working on as far as India is concerned and uh, with particular uh, multinational clients of theirs. And, uh, of course, we have to see whether the, those, those deals happen or not. But uh, they think that they, they uh, could, and hence there's a range of 2,500 course to 4,500 course. So uh, I hope that uh, shows you that this joint venture with Bopac enables ages to do uh, uh, projects of a different size and, and, and do types of uh, projects that we've not done before, including the VLGC jetties, including the uh, including the um, uh, industrial term liquid terminals, as well as uh, a bigger size uh, LPG projects that we we have not been able to do in the past. And that's the benefit of ages and Bopac working together. All of which, if they're, if they're highly profitable, will result in, in greater profits uh, for ages, uh, ultimately 51% of it uh, in ages, uh, in a condensed time frame of five years rather than taking 10, 15 years. And what I've, what I've said uh, in, uh, in, in the last uh, couple of weeks is, look, never in the history of ages have we seen that type of CapEx program of 2,500 to 4,500 crores over, over a period of five years. And, uh, you know, we, we talked in hundreds of crores, you know, over two years. And three. So, you know, the, the reason we can do that is we're going to do it together with Volkai. And, um, and that will ultimately result in profits growth for uh, earnings per share for ages shareholders. Sure, because that is very interesting. Can I just add one comment here, uh, which uh, uh, answers um, uh, part of the com uh, question that Ankit had? Sure, sure. Yeah. Raj, go ahead, Raj. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you, the set, there was another. There was another part of your question, I believe, um, uh, the earlier part, which is uh, uh, other than the joint venture uh, growth opportunities, which you uh, alluded to, and the deployment of, of that cash. Your, your question was also that, as far as Aegis shareholders uh, are concerned, uh, you know, uh, what would they see that? Uh, because Aegis, as a standalone entity, will also have substantial cash uh, cash inflows. Uh, on an ongoing basis from its retained businesses, uh, and uh, of course it will be sitting on um, a fairly healthy cash balance as well. And I think your question was, the first part of your question was, uh, what about Aegis shareholders directly? And I think uh, two things I would add to what Anish has just uh, commented. Uh, obviously, um, you know, uh, Aegis is going to be uh, focused on expanding its uh, retain businesses, the retail uh, LPG business and any other opportunities which come up. Uh, so we'll definitely be looking at that. Um, and the second uh, point is that, uh, um, you know, the Aegis board has, um, uh, you know, in terms of capital uh, return policy to, to shareholders, um, you know, already uh, has a fairly established uh, dividend policy. Um, and uh, we intend to continue growing our dividend um, every nine with uh, uh, what is uh, uh, reasonable uh, and uh, in line with the profits growth of, 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 the, of the company. So, um, you know, the age of shareholders will definitely not be forgotten. <laughs> uh, but our objective is obviously to continue to deploy capital um, in, in profitable uh, uh, and where there's high return on invested capital uh, projects. Uh, yeah, and can I just add, uh, sorry, I, now Raj, uh, that, that uh, I remember the, the first time the question, can I just add to what Raj said, absolutely right, uh, which is that um, we think uh, now uh, at ages with the VOPAC deal, but also the 
business that uh, Aegis retains 100%, which is the retail LPG business, as well as the uh, uh, Mumbai uh, terminals, uh, particularly the LPG terminal. We think that there is uh, also growth, uh, a lot of growth there. And uh, in other words, uh, Aegis through its joint venture with Wopac, as well as uh, its existing business, 100% owned businesses, uh, there are enough uh, projects and profitable opportunities and acquisitions out there to, uh, to deploy into that, which will be rewarding to shareholders rather than uh, just return, uh, return uh, capital to, to shareholders in the form of buybacks or, or dividends. Uh, you know, that, that is absolutely our policy, that we think there are uh, great uh, profitable opportunities out there uh, which we can, uh, we can get high returns. Uh, if the, 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 the day when, when we have uh, run out of uh, things to invest in and grow, then yes, then the question may come. Uh, okay, let's let's have higher dividends, and Aegis will stop stop being a uh, such a growth company. But that's not that day has not come uh, yet, and we're nowhere near that uh, thing. The whole whole point of the Wopac deal was actually to uh, enhance the scope of gro uh, profitable growth opportunities, uh, and uh, we we believe that uh, you know we we've been able to kind of uh, at least show show people the direction which which we're going to go. And um, there's, uh, and, and I think ultimately that's good for all ages investors and shareholders but to see that uh, the, the company can actually deploy capital into high growth uh, and uh, highly profitable opportunities. But we're, we're nowhere near uh, running out of that uh, for, for, for many years to come. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's, that's what at least people would like to hear, that ages is actually putting its foot on the, on the growth pedal rather than uh, taking it off the growth pedal. And, you know uh, the, the kind of uh, projects that we have, uh, that you alluded to you know large uh, uh, storage tanks or you know uh, uh, for petrochemical companies do you think with this kind of capital you might also be or you might also be able to and the technical expertise of uh, Volpac, you might also be able to reduce the construction timelines and you know getting the so let's say uh, such a large project and normally we have seen for our uh, previous project, we usually take at least two years to construct and getting approvals and all. So uh, the, the, the timeline for construction of these projects, can that also be reduced with the Volpac expertise? I don't think so because uh, Aegis has, uh, that's Aegis expertise and we've proven uh, uh, that we are uh, amazingly fast in terms of how we execute these projects in under Indian conditions as well as uh, in terms of the costing of, of uh, these projects. In fact, one of the things that uh, attracted Wopac uh, to ages, apart from having the network of access that we already do, is its project execution capability, because uh, it's recognized by Wopac that this is really, uh, you know, quite, quite frankly, um, excellent uh, performance. So uh, that's the strength that ages brings uh, to the table. Uh, I don't think that uh, you know that that's something that uh, we will uh, will be able to uh, tremendously uh, improve because it's already at a very high high level. Uh, but what what will help is uh, sh uh, what will help uh, with Wopac is the sheer number of projects that might be going on simultaneously throughout the country uh, in different parts of the country. We will need uh, 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 more project strength. We will need more people. And uh, the good news is, uh, as I said, Wopac uh, Projects Department already is, is already helping out. So we just have more people to be able to do multiple projects. And uh, uh, we don't have to just do one or two projects at one time. We can do multiple projects. Uh, and then, you know, the faster we can do multiple projects and deliver them on the ground, uh, the faster it translates into profits, uh, which is what we're all interested in. So I think that, that's the benefit of Wopac, but not really uh, increasing the, the, the speed of uh, the need. Murad, do you want to just comment on that? Uh, because you're very much involved with the projects, uh, projects team as well. Yeah, yeah you're, 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 right, you're right that uh, Aegis has been the best in, uh, in, the, in the business of execution of projects. And uh, uh, as far as OPAC is concerned, uh, I think, yes, they, they will give us, uh, you know, technical expertise uh, on 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 projects which will uh, help us uh, maybe 
to to uh, like like we have said uh, to to get into new products as well as you know to improve uh, if there is any room to do so in uh, whatever we have been doing in past years yeah yeah thank you so much that was very interesting thank you the next question is from the line of himanshu yadav from edelweiss please go ahead yeah hi uh, absolute amount is 90 crores uh, it's that's the estimate from uh, fy22 projections yes yeah. so sure. that's very helpful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jv parik from suniti securities and finance please go ahead uh, thanks my question has already been answered thank you the next question is from the line of ankit from bamb capital please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity so you know uh, we if we look at it will be getting close to 2500 crore plus uh, from uh, this uh, post completion of this deal from uh, the gv as well as from world bank and you know uh, if uh, we talk about the gv we have to take plans of let's say around the, the ballpark figure that you gave in the last call was around 2500 to 4000 or to be spent over the next uh, 3 to 5 years and you know uh, even if we assume there is a one is to one debt equity uh, you know uh, requirement in gv for funding this project uh, you know it will not be that significant uh, to deploy the entire 2500 crore we will be receiving and uh, apart from that uh, over the next 3 to 5 years we'll be generating uses stand alone will be generating uh, cash flows and even the gv will be uh, generating significant uh, cash flows so you know any uh, thoughts on you know returning this capital to uh, minority uh, to the shareholders and uh, you know uh, how do we plan to uh, deploy such a huge cash that we have uh, on our stand alone basis i i know it's still early days for you to decide but if you can broadly throw some light on you know, whether giving uh, money back to the shareholders will make more sense than you know Uh, deploying this money in future projects. Yeah, uh, I'll answer that directly. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just uh, uh, clarify one uh, thing, which I think is got wrong. Remember, we said very clearly that the debt equity ratio of the JV company will there's a cap of 0.5 to 0.6 to one, not one to one. Okay. So we will not sure. be taking more uh, to fund the 4,500 crores of capex if we go above that. uh thing. therefore um uh, you know see, there will be a requirement uh of both shell the ages and go pack uh to to recycle uh, uh for ages to recycle some of that uh, cash amount into the uh, into that 4500 crores of uh, capex up to 4500 crores of uh, capex um because we, we will not go above the uh, the get equity uh, cap of uh, 0.5 to 1 um that's the first thing second thing is um if yes you're right there will be a certain amount of free cash flow from operations thrown off by the uh, by the uh, uh, jv co of course uh, we will be uh, seeing uh, the board will decide the uh, ages go back board will decide whether uh, some will go into dividends and uh, bulk of it yes will be going into the uh, into the um uh, debt service of that of that uh, debt that we going to take uh, uh, you know then that we took part in the jv co so there will be some of that uh, and some will go into into the capex uh, that 4500 crore so that's the balance that we will have to judge uh, but uh, there's no question in our mind that uh, both ages and vopac will have to Uh, pump in further uh, funds into the joint venture company in order that we uh, do the project now let me let me be very clear on this the whole point the whole point of this deal with bopac uh, is to actually do implement those projects as fast as possible as long as they are uh, commercially viable and uh, high return projects the whole uh, what you would all like to hear as aj showed is uh, presumably like me is that uh, you know that we can accelerate the growth and uh, and therefore uh, the the profits ultimately the project get uh, commission as long as that uh, they are regarded high high profitability projects which which they are and um, so we want to make sure that uh, both ages of course both acts we can can pay for itself 
uh, and the joint venture company itself can uh, fully fund at uh, on demand actually when those projects happen. We don't want to be scrabbling around for months on end saying, oh, how are we going to fund uh, fund those uh, those projects? So as soon as we can do those projects, finance will not be a constraint uh, from either Aegis, uh, uh, GoPack, or uh, the JV company, uh, because the whole goal is as soon as we can physically uh, do it on the ground, implement those projects. Uh, one constraint will not be there in terms of finance. Uh, management constraints will probably not be there uh, in the sense that now we will have the bench strength of uh, Wopac uh, Global to help us, uh, including, and by the way, even before the deal is closed, I, I can say this, uh, you know, the Wopac Projects team uh, have already been in touch with the Aegis Projects team looking at some of those, uh, those projects that we have to start working. So even though the financial transaction is not closed yet, the work is already started between Aegis and GoPack. So ultimately, it's all about delivery and execution on the ground. Uh, that's what is going to result in uh, extra profits for GoPack as well as Aegis, 51%, and uh, doing it as fast as possible. And that's how the whole deal has been uh, structured. So I hope that uh, explains uh, uh, the, the thing. But the clear, clear uh, uh, thing is, Debt cap of 0.5 to 1 uh, in the uh, joint venture company that will be conservative. Both shareholders have written that into the uh, into the joint venture shareholders agreement that we will not go above that cap. And, but therefore, both shareholders are prepared, Aegis and GoPack, to uh, uh, fund as required those the, the, uh, capex plans, not only for the next five years but beyond. Uh, but of course, the next five years is the most clearly defined. Uh, Sorry. Hello? Yeah. Uh, so, the second question on this you know, deployment on this 4500 crore CPEX plan that he has in the GD, if you look at it, sir, Kamla uh, has been our largest terminal and that did not consume, uh, that consumed hardly 400 crore of capital. So, you know, this, uh, I know it's still early days, but such huge deployment of uh, capital, uh, even for setting new terminals, will not be needing such huge capital. So, any broad, uh, you know, uh, a picture, a color on what kind of APEX spend uh, we will be doing in the GV that will require such huge capital over the next three to five years? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, uh, actually, uh, you, you, uh, the, the, the whole uh, clue uh, in, in this, that we will be doing uh, 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 bigger size projects than what Aegis has been doing in the past, uh, but we'll be also doing different types of projects, not just LPG terminals uh, or liquid uh, terminals of the size that Aegis has been doing. So you're absolutely right. If you look at a Kandla LPG project, the CapEx was 350 crores. If you look at a Mangalore liquid terminal project, you know, 50,000 uh, uh, kiloliters, you know, the ticket sizes were much smaller. That's what Aegis could do. But now that we have tied up with uh, ROPAC, uh, what we've jointly agreed over, over eight, nine months of uh, discussion is that now we can actually jointly do much bigger size uh, uh, LPG terminals, uh, other types of projects, and multiple projects, uh, including uh, connectivity projects like railway gantries, all at the same time. But we will also, you ask for flavor, we'll also be doing, i just give you an example, uh, things which Aegis has not been doing in the past. For example, and this is in our presentation of the deal, you can look at that on the website. Uh, we, uh, the two, part, the two partners, Aegis and Volpac, will be uh, looking to invest in uh, jetty uh, construction. Uh, that's not anything that Aegis has ever done in the past with all those type of costs. Uh, and why are we doing that? It's so that we can actually have more, uh, for example, LPG throughput uh, to allow the LGCs to come in. This is going to be uh, important. That's a constraint that we have to increase the throughput volume. So we'll be investing uh, uh, in perhaps one or two. Already those projects have been identified. Let's see whether they're one or two. Uh, but one one is almost, uh, almost certain. Um, the the uh, other types of projects that Aegis has not done, which is now going to be in the scope of the Aegis Wopac joint venture, uh, will be what Wopac calls industrial terminals, industrial liquid terminals. And uh, what what uh, this is is something that 
WOFAC does uh, in other countries in the world, but they would like to introduce it to India, that uh, they build something like half a million to one million kiloliters or cubic meters of storage dedicated to a large multinational customer that they have, uh, who, let's, for the sake of example, let's call it a petrochemicals uh, customer, uh, who, uh, who basically outsources to the uh, AGES WOPAC joint venture uh, the whole... Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is, uh, Manish, do you think FY23, uh, the throughput volumes will be able to cross uh, 5 million ton? Uh, and second, uh, clarification from Murad, I mean, you said the for FY22 estimated uh, beta share to Bopak is around 90 crore. I mean, how have you arrived at that? Because in the deal call, you said 248 crore is the EBITDA, which is for the, you know, assets which are kind of, you know, going into the JV. So, I mean, how does 90 crore maths works out? Uh, yeah, okay, let me take the first one, and I'll, I'll uh, ask Murat to answer the second one. On the first one, uh, obviously, I'm not going to give uh, uh, targets for FY23 in terms of LPG throughput uh, volumes uh, in this call or, or uh, publicly. We don't do that. Uh, we give very specific uh, forecasts of, of that. But listen, I, let me put it this way. Uh, if you go to our uh, slide, uh, just one minute, let me see where that is, um, which is the uh, throughput capacity slide, uh, uh, slide 12. We are, once the Kanda terminal is ready, we will have a capacity of 9 point, uh, able to handle 9.6 million tons uh, of LPG. And uh, last year, we did an actual throughput of uh, below 3 million tons. I think I can't remember the figure. It was 2.9 or 2.8 million tons, something like that. So the, the whole goal will be to drive towards uh, first uh, the full capacity utilization, 9.6 million tons. Uh, I'm not going to give, as I said, the forecast of FY23, but it's going to uh, depend on how much uh, throughput we can do full year of operation in uh, in Canada uh, in FY23. It's obviously going to uh, continue to depend on the PIPA railway throughput and uh, and all those uh, issues. Uh, how are the increase? Uh, so what what I'm saying is that the whole game plan is how to increase from 3 million or 2.9 million, 2.8 million last year towards that full capacity utilization. It's going to take some time. Uh, there are specific things that we need to do in, uh, in uh, uh, the specific things we need to do in Haldia, the specific things we need to do in PIPA, further things we need to do, uh, which actually is part of the, the plan with GoFax. Um, but the faster we implement those, those uh, things, which is in the business plan, some of them are connectivity issues, the faster we can we can uh, get those uh, throughput uh, volumes. And the, the way I would best describe it is we want to make all the uh, terminals of uh, Aegis and Aegis Wopac, the LPG terminals, the most preferred terminals uh, to be used by uh, IOC, HPCL, BPCL as the main, main users of these terminals. And the way to do that, uh, we know exactly what, what we have to do. Uh, basically, it's to make sure that they are the lowest delivered cost of LPG, uh, but there are still things we need to do uh, in order to get to that, uh, that state. Um, so I think that's, that's what, what we're about, and I think you will see over the coming years, I don't want to just say FY23, you will see rising figures of throughput volumes, not because I say so, because uh, uh, Aegis is a nice company and Wopac is a nice company, but because the users, the customers, realize that this is the most efficient uh, way and the cheapest way of delivering LPG to where they want it, uh, in other words, their bottling plants. And there's a whole host of things we, we, we need to do, uh, some of which are already underway, some of which will be implemented over, over the next year. Now, for example, Kanda LPG, just last point, uh, you know, we, 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 the work that we're doing right now is to ensure uh, uh, the pipeline uh, connectivity into the Loni pipeline, for example, uh, that work is going on. Uh, so that uh, we, we do give uh, the customers that uh, lowest delivered cost to where, where they want it. So things like that. I mean, these are all the things that we, we, we are building into our terminal. Just building a terminal is not sufficient. We have to do various things uh, to, to make sure that they become the most 
competitive LPG terminals in India. Uh, not there yet, but that project work is going on, and with the help of OPAC, we'll be, we'll be doing even better as far as all those things are concerned. So I don't want to be tied into a forecast for FY23, but what I would like to say is that uh, the whole goal now of uh, not only the joint venture agents, OPAC, but of ages itself is to, uh, uh, having built this capacity, and we're going to be building more capacity, uh, and LPG capacity is to drive up the, those throughput volumes, which ultimately result in in higher profits for uh, for uh, ages uh, and both back and uh, uh, together. That's that's really the the, the, the whole goal. Uh, the second question uh, in terms of the EBITDA and all that, I'll I'll hand it to back to Murad to explain uh, again one more time. Yeah, we have explained this in our last week on and I'll again repeat. 248 is the total EBITDA of the business uh, in this uh, joint venture. However, large part of it is Haldia LPG uh, business, in which Vopac uh, is taking only 24% stake. So as such, if uh, you then accordingly calculate, it is 90 crore EBITDA, which is going Vopac's way. Sure, sure, understood. Yeah, uh, thanks. So uh, Anish, uh, thanks for your explanation. Uh, another way of putting my question is, I mean, how reasonable do you think is uh, our, 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 you know, our estimate of having 1 million ton run rate in the first year, or first year of operation for for Kandla? Uh, well, uh, you know, if if you look at it on a uh, first year of operation rather than quarter by quarter, I think uh, we still uh, we still are comfortable with a range of 0.7 to 1 million tons. I think we're on a, on a, without looking at quarter by quarter, but on an annualized basis. So I think we are comfortable with that. Uh, as I said, the, the most important thing is to complete the project uh, uh, as fast as possible and to uh, make sure that pipeline interconnection is there. That is absolutely to the lonely pipeline, because then it it's almost becomes, uh, now, let me be careful not to say a no-brainer, but uh, it, it becomes a very, uh, a, a extremely competitive way of delivering LPG to where the customers want it. That's the that's the conversation that we've had with the with the customers. So that's why we're comfortable with uh, with that 0.7 to 1 million tons as as the first full year of uh, operation. We we, we, we we do that, but the project is not over. We, we are still completing that work as we speak. Uh, but we. time constraint that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to mr anish chandraya for his closing comments uh actually uh, this time i maybe i'd uh, prefer uh, raj uh, he, he can he can summarize i think i've said all my piece uh raj if you could just summarize uh, what, what we talked about as far as fy22 and uh, and beyond uh, that that would be probably quite useful for everyone yeah, certainly. Um, so I think, uh, you know, obviously we're not uh, uh, particularly uh, happy with uh, this, uh, you know, uh, Q1 of uh, um, of, the, of this year. Anisha explained in detail some of the uh, reasons behind uh, um, the, you know, lackluster performance. Uh, but um, I, I, we are, uh, um, you know, uh, seeing definitely seeing signs of a of a bounce back uh, in and return to more normal business conditions and uh, getting uh, on that basis getting our uh, strategy back on track um, uh, obviously the uh, the announcement of our uh, strategic partnership uh, and joint venture with Vopac is going to have a significant and major um, uh, uh, impact on uh, uh, every quarter and every year going forward, uh, given the, the, the plans that we have uh, and the capacity and capability, both from a financial and managerial perspective, uh, to, to uh, capitalize on, on the opportunities of India uh, back on its feet. 
uh, <clears throat> these these uh, uh, opportunities uh, and, and the growth plans obviously will not uh, materialize every quarter in, in strict cadence, but uh, there is a clear plan. And uh, I think uh, I'd like to convey to all our, um, our investors that uh, uh, we are extremely uh, positive and confident on, on the uh, outlook uh, for the company, despite um, some setbacks uh, that I think most companies have had in, in uh, recent months. Uh, but uh, we, are, we are very confident um, as far as the future goes. So that, that's it from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Aegis Logistics Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.